Um, in, in some sense, this is sort of like a spiritual sequel, but also a standalone. Um, so I want to talk about something, uh, you know, like a conceptual framework um, that I use to sort of organize how I'm thinking about the future, which I call the network state. And uh, the basic idea is just like every company is becoming a software company, every country will eventually be forced to become a software country. Um, and uh, you know, I'll dive into what this means and also how uh, you might be able to personally benefit from it. We're going to basically talk about you know, four things. right? So you start your own company, uh, you start your own community like a social network, start your own currency, start your own country, and right now we are here. Right? Um, that's, that's basically where we are on that roadmap with uh, digital currencies now at like 100 something billion, 130, uh, Bitcoin might be at 4,000 by the time I get off the stage. Um, and uh, that's pretty awesome. That, that completely didn't exist even you know, like seven, eight years ago. And uh, where we're going from that is uh, the next step will be starting your own country. Um, that's where we're eventually gonna go. Uh, and how do we actually get there? Um, and that's basically this concept of the network state. So just to motivate the idea a little bit, um, basically what, what we used to have and what we still have uh, are nation states where essentially you have a geographical area, for example, Russia, and geography is primary, and the ideology is secondary. That same geography could be communist, it could be you know, nationalist like it is now, but basically you swap the flags, you swap the ideology, the, the geography remains constant. Um, but uh, what we're moving towards is something where the ideology, the beliefs remain constant and the location changes. So those are the two meetup spots for DevCon for Ethereum. So last year was in Shanghai, and this year's in Cancun. Same people, different place, same beliefs. Okay, um, as opposed to same people, same place, different beliefs, which is where the nation state was. And uh, the thinking here is that you know a lot of folks here are interested in stuff like seasteads and and Mars colonies and what have you and startup cities. But there's actually an achievable possible, you know, what people call the adjacent possible that's feasible even you know, now. Um, and what that is is something I call crowd choice. It's basically collective bargaining with governments. So now it's you know, already you know, something that's being done in small scale with like the Free State Project where a bunch of libertarians moved to New Hampshire. Um, it's something which you know, Elon Musk has done uh, when he's like negotiating with you know, Nevada. Uh, and it's, uh, it's something where you know, the tools for finding good locations um, as I'll get into, have become much, much better. So you can actually comparison shop for the ideal jurisdiction. And the idea here is that before you can even think of moving 10,000 people to a seastead, uh, you need to just be able to move 10,000 people to a country. And that itself is actually a very non-trivial thing to do to coordinate 10,000 people moving. And just proving that out with today's technology um, and negotiating a bargain with the government to the other side doesn't require anything new from a tech standpoint uh, but what it just does require is some you know, customer acquisition and, and business model building. And once you can do that, it's sort of like working out a muscle, if you can then you know, push a button and get 10,000 people to arrive in a location, you can charge, start changing the location to more and more ambitious places, like a charter city, and then eventually to something like a seastead or a Mars colony. But first, being able to coordinate and move thousands of people in a reliable way, that is still an unsolved problem in terms of doing it in a, in a predictable and reproducible way. And you know, so you put all these things together and you get something that I think of as the rise of the network state. Okay, so it starts with encryption, uh, it starts with things like you know, the spread of social networks. And you know, over the next five, 10 years, as VR deploys, as digital currency deploys, you're gonna have virtual worlds with virtual currencies where people can experiment with different kinds of systems. They can experiment with their Paris Commune, they can experiment with their Galt's Gulch. And because it's encrypted, it's invite only, and really nobody can stop them. And you can have every, you know, at least three of the five senses. You can have, you know, sight, you can have sound, uh, and you can have touch with haptics. You won't have smell or taste, uh, but unless you're Gulls Gulch is, you know, a perfume company, that won't be a, too big a deal. Um, and what will happen, in my view, is kind of what's already happening, which is that these virtual organizations, these uh, virtual realities with virtual currency, these social networks, will eventually want to meet up in person, which is basically what this room is. It's a bunch of folks who came from common interest, organized via the internet, and assembled in place. And um, that's because there's certain kinds of human things that are just still best done in person. And uh, what, what that does is it starts to fundamentally change the entire logic of you know, the Leviathan and how we, uh, how we enforce laws, how we change laws, uh, because rather than voting every four years, um, you can, you know, to change the law under which you live, you can just move to change the law under which you live and be with like people. So it's no longer a four-year election cycle. It's basically, okay, how easily can I move with 500 other people to this location? How flexible am I? How much can I exit? 